Today I'm going to be looking at the track Memphis by Lonnie Mack and this is something of an instrumental guitar classic I think and I do enjoy looking at these kind of tracks but to be honest Lonnie Mack is not somebody that I know that much about for one reason or another he seems to have passed me by but this track was requested by a couple of people and I'm really pleased to have discovered it because it's super fun to play and I'm going to begin by playing through the whole track then I'll tell you a little bit more about it and then I'll break down what's going on in a bit of detail so let's get started. one was recorded in 1963 and it started out I think as a kind of cover version of the Chuck Berry tune Memphis Tennessee though it then became its own thing you can't actually hear that many similarities between the two tracks I don't think and as I said I'm not that familiar with Lonnie Mack but according to his Wikipedia page he was an influential trailblazer and a lead guitar innovator and apparently quite an influential figure in the evolution of rock and blues guitar and he seemed to bridge the gap between I think the earlier more primitive rock and blues players and then the later players who had a bit more technique and a bit more of a kind of virtuoso approach to things. Let's take a look at what's going on here then and there is some quite challenging stuff in here uh, you don't need to have super shredder grade chops to be able to tackle something like this but I think you do need to have your technique together and it's played at quite a fast tempo and there's some quite fast picked stuff in there and there's certainly a few things that challenge me so let's take a look at what's going on. We're in the key of G for this one, and I suppose it's a kind of blues in G. It's based around the one, four, five chords in the key of G. That's G, C, and D. Though it's not a conventional 12 bar blues. In fact, it feels like the blues form has been stretched and you're spending twice as long as normal on each of those chords. So it's more like a 24 bar blues for the main section of this piece. Then there's a little bridge section as well, which I will discuss a bit later in the video. But the first thing you hear is this little intro riff. So this is all based off of triad shapes and it's that D chord shape and we're starting up here in the 12th position, playing that twice, that's a C triad, then moving that down two frets to a B flat triad and then sliding back up again. And we're playing on beats two and four here, so it's a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So 
So that's our intro riff. Then we've got this great main riff. And I suppose this is kind of a twist on that standard blues rock and roll riff, that kind of that kind of idea. So uh, this is based off of a G power chord, so fret three on the sixth string and five on the fifth string. And we're stretching up to the seventh fret on the fifth string. So and playing each of those shapes twice. And then we've got this. So your third finger is already at the fifth fret on the fifth string. We're just sliding that up two frets to fret seven. And then a double stop at the fifth fret on the G and D strings. I'm just flattening down my first finger over both of those strings. So the way I'm picking that is all with down strokes. Except for that double stop, which I'm catching with an upstroke of the pick. So then it's just a case of taking that through the other chords in the blues form. So that's the one chord riff. Uh, it goes to the four chord, that's C, and you can just move that across to the next pair of strings. And you've got that similar sliding move followed by the double stop. And back to the one. And then when you go to the five, that's going to be based off of a D chord shape. And then four. And back home to one. Then we've got what I'm going to call the main theme. That's the bit that goes like this. So a great part of this. And all of this is coming from the G minor pentatonic scale. And you're going to want to know your main pattern one of that scale and also this little extended box pattern. So you've got pattern one, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. And then you've got this little extension of the pattern. So you can slide up into this little box shape. Some people describe it as a kind of a house shape. You've got the, the walls of the house and then the, the roof on top. And uh, if you're not familiar with this stuff, then uh, you might like to check out my beginner's guitar soloing course, where all of this is covered in quite a lot of detail. So I get a little plug in for my course there. I'll put a link to that under this video. So the main theme starts like this. <laughs> We've got this double stop shape here, so seven on the G and six on the B, just sliding into that. And then coming back into that main pentatonic shape and playing some single notes. And I think there's a nice little backwards slide into this C note here. So. That's the main idea. Then there are just a couple of little variations on that phrase. So one of them goes like this. So it's very similar, but we've got this skip over onto this high G note. So we're skipping the octave there. And then I think there's a further variation, which is like this. So we're once again skipping over to this high G, but then we've got the addition of this flat five blues scale note as well. So sliding from six to five on the third string. So all really variations on that same phrase. So you can listen to the original recording and hear which bit goes where. And uh, I'm not sure in my initial playthrough that I played it exactly like he played it on the record, but I think I got fairly close. But if you want to, I will tab this out note for note so you can play it exactly like on the record, but really you just need to learn that basic phrase and some variations and it should all start to happen. And then it's really just a case of taking that riff, all these variations on the riff 
through that 24 bar form and there's a slight pause in that riff when it comes to the 5 chord when you hit that D chord um, just pause on that double stop shape and then and then back to the riff Next we've got a bridge section and this starts on the 5 chord, so on, on the D chord and Lonnie Mac is playing this kind of a riff. And once again this is quite a standard blues phrase, you often hear it in a slow blues kind of context where you've got that. I'm sure you've all heard that kind of sound, so it's based on this little triangle of, of notes here. So we've got 12 on the D and then 11 and then 12. So sliding that shape or sliding into that shape. And I'm playing the 10th fret on the top string with my first finger. And then just sliding that whole shape down. all played against a D bass note and what that's giving you is a kind of a D6 sound going to a D, a D9 kind of sound so it all fits the sound of the, the overall sound of that D chord, the, the 5 chord in the blues in, in uh, G. And then we're heading to the 1 chord G and we're using the same riff so just taking that down to this end of the fretboard. And then back up again. And then back once again to the main riff. So I just want to talk briefly about the solo and I think it's a difficult solo to play note for note and I don't think I quite pulled it off note for note. I tried to stay as close as I could to the recording in my little play through just now but it was a, a little bit ragged and I didn't get some of the bits quite right but I think that's probably the best approach with this kind of solo and I think you can take inspiration from what Lonnie Mac is doing and maybe learn some of those licks but ultimately I think it's more valuable and more rewarding to do it your own way. So I'm just going to take you through this phrase by phrase I'm not going to describe every single note here or we'd be here all day but I'll point out any kind of uh, notable things as we go through this and once again all of this is really taken from the G minor pentatonic scale so it's either in position one or in that little box shape extension and the first little lick goes like this we've got so quite a simple phrase just coming out of our box shape at the sixth and eighth frets then we've got a variation on that And then one more variation. And then. So making our way down into that pattern one minor pentatonic. Um, the place I'm making the change is. Uh, is there on the second string. So just shifting down onto my first finger. We have got some fingering options with some of this stuff. I'm not sure this is exactly how Lonnie Mac would, would finger it but it kind of makes sense for me to make that transition along the length of the second string. So we've got this kind of so a quick shift down to the third fret on the second string. Some blues scale stuff there and some more quite simple pentatonic stuff. Then we're into this idea. So this is just classic Chuck Berry kind of stuff here. So bending at six on the B and playing the third fret on the top string. And the next phrase. So more just minor pentatonic blues scale stuff. There's uh, a couple of extra notes thrown in there as well, so got the, the, the fifth fret there, which is the, the second or the ninth thrown in. And then so more variations. 
very similar G minor pentatonic type material and then this is a, a great little phrase here so just really repeating that bent note here so bending at the eighth fret on the top string and gradually releasing that bend and one thing that Lonnie Mac seems to do is to use a, a whammy bar so you could try grabbing that as you're playing this lead That, that sounds really cool if you've got a whammy bar on your guitar to, to bend and add vibrato with your fretting hand and also to add in a bit of whammy vibrato as well. And then the solo concludes. So more very similar stuff. So if you do want to learn this note for note, then check out my tab. Otherwise, I think just um, learn a few of these ideas, understand what's going on and uh, do it your own kind of way. Then after the solo I think we've just got another bridge section and then for the outro it's more of these triads but this time the triads are G and F so we've got So that's about it for this one and as I've already said several times this is a difficult one to play absolutely note for note I'm sure Lonnie Mac wouldn't play it exactly the same way twice so I think learn the basic riffs and then feel free to do it your own way and it's okay to be a little bit loose with some of these ideas. Let me talk you through the gear that I'm using today and there are some fantastic tones I think on the original recording. Not sure exactly what Lonnie Mac used on the recording. You do see pictures of him using an amazing looking flying V with a Bigsby on it so maybe he used that on the recording. And I think I remember reading somewhere that he used magnetone amps so that's a, a possibility. But today I'm using my Jazzmaster and I'm going into my Fender Princeton and the overdrive is all natural overdrive coming from the Princeton. I've got that on about seven today and I'm just attenuating the volume in the room with my UA Oxbox. And I've got some tremolo on there as well. You can definitely hear tremolo on the original recording. And the, the coolest part of the original recording I think is the sound that he gets in the solo and it sounds you know, really messy. It almost sounds like his amp is breaking or something's going wrong, which is, is super cool. So I couldn't quite uh, replicate that. But uh, the closest I could get was just using uh, a fuzz pedal. And I've got something called a Gnarly Fuzz by uh, Basic Audio. And it's got a, a controller in it called Text which I think is, is short for texture. And if you just wind that control down, it gives you that kind of thin, slightly broken sound. So that was about as close as I could get today to matching the sound on the Lonnie Mac recording. Let's hear what this sounds like then. This is just the Jazzmaster into the Princeton with a bit of tremolo. <laughs> Kick on the fuzz. That's it for this one. I hope you've enjoyed it. I have tabbed out the entire piece and put together what I hope is a nice, reliable and accurate tab and also put together my own backing track. You can find both of those things on my Patreon page. Thanks a lot for watching. I will see you next time.